name is Heidi Froman. I am a preschool teacher here at Lynch Elementary. Technology and advancements have always been part of the world. So when you find something that works, you got to teach these kids how to do it. And leaving them behind is not an option. In preschool, we've already, we are a one-to-one -one school. So starting in seventh grade, all of our kids have laptops. That's the way they do everything. They work with Google Docs. They every PDF billers, they are a technology school and you gotta start them kind of younger. I do totally agree they're young enough to where they need to play. Play is still ultimately the most important part. But for 10 minutes, a couple times a week, it's something that introduces them to it and it just, it gives them a foundation to that they can build on as they get a little bit older. The best way to learn about new apps is to talk to other teachers, what works, what doesn't work and listening word of mouth i found a good an excellent site it's um, turtlediary.com they have some wonderful worksheets and i would literally just screenshot them and then put them on my ipad through notability and the kids can do them that way then i can take a screenshot of whatever they did on occasion if i want to and i can send it to mom immediately it's i kind of like it as well for the fact of a lot of apps are the kids get so much worked up on the instant feedback and that ding, 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 and that sort of stuff that that's their main goal. Their main goal is to see if they can get some sort of sticker or something like that. And I, I was questioning whether or not they were actually learning any of it. So with these, I can actually tell and see what they're able to do to count rather than just, oh, I want to push this one or, oh, I want to push that one to see if I can get some sort of a ding dong. If you fun ones, the color mix, the kids. This one has a little bit of limitations with preschool just for the fact of a preschooler doesn't have as much control with their hands to be able to maneuver it and still keep the picture in. But it's still something that they love because their picture comes to life. Um, those are ones that I do for the older kids, the kindergarten and first, I actually do Kahoot. Uh, a lot of kids at trainings and things, I hear a lot of people say, oh, that's a high school game. It is not a high school game. The kindergarten or first graders do it quite, it's color coordinated. I mean, they don't have to read anything. They just have to push the color. So it works beautifully. And the kids, they think that it is a game. They think it's a game and that they get to play whatever it is that, yay, it's iPad day. But it's a way I can evaluate whether or not they've been paying attention and whether they've been listening. You can make a kahoot in 10, 15 minutes. So, and it's specialized to me to where I know that it's the stuff we've covered in class. I was looking for apps that kind of just did exactly that. Show, show them the night sky to where you can look at the planets and kind of zoom in onto them. And when I, the first time that we did it, the kids just loved it. I mean, it was, they were obsessed with the sun primarily at the beginning because you can make it so bright and then dark and bright. But it was, it was kind of neat because they were, they would ask for it. They would ask to be able to do the star walk and they immediately jump over there. The bigger kids like it as well. We do constellations and things of that matter. We look it up there and you can see, but the planets just look like one kind of, when you zoom in and to see all the different colors colors that they are. You know, the red planet doesn't really look that red when you look up in the night sky, but when you really zoom into it, then it's like, oh, that's why they call it the red planet. So it was the ability to be able to manipulate a little bit more and zoom in and see real life pictures was worth a lot. Next year, that's, I've already asked for a couple more iPads, <laughs> <laughs> primarily because I'll have a few more kids. And it just, that is one of the limitations I think most classrooms have is that there's, there's just not enough of it. They have one or two. And when you only have one or two, you really can't utilize them nearly the way that a lot of people would like to be able to utilize them. So if your school ever says we have technology money or, and you're thinking, well, I already have an iPad, that's okay. Get two, get three. It's because the more you have of them, the more comfortable they'll get with them and the more comfortable you'll get with them because technology is here it's without a doubt here and it changes all the time so I know there's a lot that are well I can check my email or I can do you know they get comfortable enough with it to where it doesn't scare them but you need to master it that's that use it all the time we all have something we plug in we all have electronics they are here and they're we're not doing any favors for these kids when we send them out into the world, yes, you got to teach them how to work hard. Yes, you need to use your hands and your head. But at the same point in time, you have also got to prepare them for what they're going to meet in real life. And real life is technology. It's everywhere, and we've got to prepare our kids, or we're not doing them any favor.